So I've made it to Tennessee and for your viewing pleasure today, I'm going to show you this abandoned prison, the Brushy State Prison. It was closed in 2009, although it looks like it closed in 1970s. It's kind of like a museum you can pay and, and uh, tour this place around. And I'm with this guy today. Some of you might recognize him. Black Bigot, AKA Black Bugatti, AKA Lamont at Large. Lamont at Large. Yeah. He's got a lot of different a lot, a lot of YouTube channels, a lot of aliases. Yeah. But uh, he wanted to come with me and check this place out because it's pretty amazing. Yeah, for I mean, sure. it closed in 2009, but it really looks like it closed in 1979 because all this paint is peeling and it, everything's rusted. It has a lot of patina, a lot of character. And uh, one honorable mention is, uh, what is it, James Earl oh, Ray? Yeah, James Earl Ray. Assassinated uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Supposedly, depending on who you want to believe. Until his dying days, he did say that he did not shoot Martin Luther King Jr. And his son, Martin Luther King Jr.'s son. He believes him. He believes okay. that the government was behind it and that he was nothing but a quote unquote passing, but that he was not responsible okay. for the murder. So, so he was here. Um, a, lot, a lot of nasty prisoners were here. This place was known for having some really bad people stay here. So it's very interesting history. So. We're gonna take a walk around and show you what it looks like. I don't know too much about it, but I'm gonna read some signs as I go. So you're gonna like it. And also if you're into that kind of stuff, people who were in prison, people who were murdered, uh, people who did the murdering, this is your guy. He does all this kind of stuff. So go and subscribe to all of his channels. He has like 15 YouTube channels, right? Something like that, 15? About 17. Okay, yeah. so they're all worth it. Trust me, go over there right now and tell him I said hi. So, on with the tour. So this is the, uh, the D block, built in 1957. D block was used as an isolation cell quarters for prison's most difficult and deadly criminals. Prisoners were stripped of all privileges and possessions except their uniforms and bedding. Most of these prisoners spent months, if not years, locked into one of these 32 cells 23 hours a day with only one hour of exercise allowed. Walk around and do like, yeah, then they got the, is that the pull-up thing? Yeah, and then they got the, the dips, yeah. Yeah, this is awesome, look at this. Wow. Got the chin-up bar, you got the dips. Yeah, this is where, when they had outside time, I'm sure there was a basketball net in there or maybe somewhere. That's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this. One, two, three, four, five, five of them. This section was uh, where the baddest of the bad would stay. And uh, they said this was more secure than death row. Really? Yeah. That's what... This one is open here. Hey Lamont, how many push-ups can you do? Or pull-ups? Uh, let's see. All right, Lamont is gonna demonstrate to us his ability to do some pull-ups. <laughs> God, I... I'm not even gonna try, man. I've never in my life been able to do but one. I did. I think I did three at my best ever, and I was like 215. That's not easy, dude. No, it's not. Look, this is where the bag was. Punching bag. That looks like it. That looks like you put the bag yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. But just imagine the guys that were in the maximum solitary confinement. This was their. This is what well, this was their area. This was their outside. And for yeah. years, this is all they knew was just these, these walls and these metal gratings. I can't imagine that. I mean, it's better better than nothing, but Man, well, that's, I'd know. rather be out here than in my cell, I guess. But I, and plus, how many people were in here? Just one. I'm sure. I'm sure these guys were so violent you can't even put them in together. Because I'm sure that guy hated that guy. One of the. Oh uh, yeah, true. Guy down yeah. The hall. Despite the high security measures, Debok remained a constant site of violence and bloodshed. Three weeks into Stony Lane's stint as prison warden, a maximum security prisoner 
took an officer hostage on the second floor. The inmate jumped Officer Gunter while being unshackled for daily exercise and was soon holding a knife to Gunter's neck. Another inmate was holding a 9mm gun and they were demanding to speak with the new warden. By afternoon, the guards had stormed the walk with 12 gauge shotguns and 38 caliber pistols. Two inmates were injured, but Officer Gunter walked away unharmed. In the end, there is no actual 9mm, just a bar of soap shaped to look like a gun and covered uh, with black shoe polish. <laughs> Pretty smart. I can't imagine being held up in here inside this. Look at these small little cells. Ugh. No thank you. No privacy at all. Look at that. Let's see what's in here. More jail cells. Oh, this is more like the... Oh, look at that. Goes up four different levels. Oh yeah, this is, I guess, more general population. These are much nicer. Still lacking on the toilet privacy situation, but... The prison held 976 captives in 1931, 300 more than it was licensed to, and was often compared to notorious Siberian prisons of the Russian regime. The state of Tennessee reportedly saved massive funds off the free labor of prison miners. So one of the signs here says, with two thirds of the inmates working in those coal mines, they had access to tools and dynamite. And it says in 1959, the prison made national news when inmates rigged well over 200 sticks of dynamite and threatened to blow the mine if working conditions did not improve. Finally, in 1967, after a rock fall killed two convicts, um, the warden, Lake Russell, ordered the mines to be permanently closed. The decades-long legacy of inmates mining coal at Brushy had finally ended. All right, so check this out. This was the original prison structure, 1896 to 19, well, sometime in the 1930s. And then they built the new one, new prison structure, preceding original structure in the late 1930s. Wow. This strip that we're walking down was known to insiders as the street. The walk wasn't just a passageway, but a potential death trap too. On several brutal occasions, men pushed fellow inmates to their deaths over the railing. So I guess this fencing wasn't always here. In one infamous incident, a Memphis gang member turned inmate met his fate when two men grabbed him from behind and stabbed him in the neck. When he was quickly tossed over the rail, he landed on two guards standing below. Afterward, floor to ceiling cage walls were erected to help prevent such horrific events from happening again. So there you go. Doesn't say a year, but that's when these fences were put in. Oh, that one they painted a checker table, Ch tech checkers or chess. That'd be me, definitely. I'll help pass the time. Ah, oh, look at this. The joint showers has three shower heads. So each cell area has this swinging lock. I was wondering what it was before. This arm would move and then it would come through the wall and it's connected up to here and it would move this rod all the way down. I don't know how many cells that is, 20? 20 or so. So when you, when you turn that, it would turn this arm and it would lift this pin, this lock, and it would, it would lock right in here. 
So that was the, I guess, the primary lock, and then each one had a regular key lock as well. So, like we've all seen in the movies. That's pretty cool. What is this? Oh, this was one of the cafeterias or the cafeteria. These pretty beautiful old murals. <laughs> Sign says, beyond homegrown grub, the cafeteria served a plenty of murder and mayhem. There was the inmate who cut in line and soon felt the business end of a hammer hit his head. Another time, two kitchen inmates turned on a third as one used a meat cleaver to separate his spine while the other sliced off his arm with a long knife. Crazy to think that right here is where people met their demise simply for cutting in line. Look at that. Oh, this is where you'd probably throw your used um, trays after you're done eating you throw that in there like that all the slop would probably leak down there interestingly enough the same men serving life sentences for killing humans turned out to be animal lovers the strong attachments they made with the surrounding wildlife over the years were memorialized in wall paintings created by a few prisoners doubling as undercover artists. The warden allowed the men to come help at night after dinner. They initially cleaned walls, then went on to draw sketches and eventually painted animal portraits and other picturesque scenes of the outside world. Some raccoons, oh, look at this. Look how thick this is. Jeez, this is like, Two and a half inches thick at least. Oh, we can go in there from the other way. But that's where you were being watched all the time. Oh, this is the, uh, the guard station. Outside this notoriously violent cafeteria where tensions ran high, including the ever-present racial tension between black and white inmates. So that's what these holes were for. The barrel of a 30 aught rifle poked through one of the holes drilled into bulletproof glass, sent a warning to inmates that rounds would be fired if things got out of hand. In the event of a riot, the two guards aiming those rifles shot to kill. Non-contact visitation, jeez, so. Look at that, non-contact visitation, they'd sit in there and just look at each other and you'd be out here. So this is the visitation room Oh, this is obviously it was the gym here. The sign here says this gymnasium was often used for boxing matches and obviously basketball games. It was rumored that some inmates were hatching a plot to overtake this gym. At the time, plywood covered the once secure but recently broken door in the rear of the room. Suddenly the makeshift enclosure flew open sending the plywood board sliding across the floor. Armed men swarmed in, yelling, everybody against the wall. Prisoners quickly lined up. A few confused guards stationed inside the gym joined the line too, until realizing the men with guns were fellow guards, rushing in to apprehend the convicts suspected in the takeover's scheme. 
All right, here's the outside basketball court. Who? Oh, you're going a mile a minute talking. I, I don't want to interrupt you. Oh, well, they'll have to tune in. If you are a follower of Lamont and his various channels, then it's a special treat to see the behind the scenes of his live streams. <laughs> behind the scenes, baby, what's going on? Tell you what, though, I mean, the scenery around this place is beautiful. It's just surrounded by the mountains. And I think the mines are, I guess, somewhere back here. So this area was cleverly named the yard. And uh, it, this was the place for exercise and socializing. Though it conveyed a sense of freedom, prisoners like James Earl Ray, who famously jumped the wall at the right rear corner, learned they couldn't outrun both guards and locals who knew the land like the back of their hands. Despite the nice view and a few good games, the yard would always be at the bottom of hell they could never escape. So they, they obviously use this mountainside as part of the wall, just the natural landscape. But this right rear corner where the actual stone wall comes and meets the mountainside was where James Earl Ray tried to make his escape. Check this tower out. Unfortunately, you can't get up there, but the thing is infested with bees. Huh. Look at these doors. Now that's a pair of hinges. All right, we've made it back into the uh, D block area. If you remember, this is where all these little outdoor recreation cages are. And this is where Lamont failed at doing his, uh, his pull-ups. Complete and utterly failed. You think you could do one now? No, it's not as hot right now. It's a little bit later in the day. Yeah, I'm gonna try. All right, he's gonna try. But really what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock Lamont in here. Hey, Lamont. I'm getting out of here. I'll, I'll see you later. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, come on, man. I'll, I'll tell them to uh, keep you in here for a little while. I'm getting out of here. Hey, come on, man. That's no. it. Hey, I'm close to public, bro. It's here. Not, not until you do a sit up or a, uh, a pull up. <laughs> uh, I don't think. I... Not until you come do on, a pull up, man. No, please. Please, don't. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> you let me know when you can do a pull up, all right? <laughs> Go subscribe to his channel and uh, many more to come, many more videos to come in this area. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.